what did you make of Ruiz's comments about his I camp? Did, and... I, I didn't like him because there are so many excuses we could have given you for June 1, right? And he come up and with he never said one. Yeah. And he still won't say him now. And yeah. he said, I'll, I'll tell you after the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he won't. And there's nothing like panic attack, knocks out his spine, total bollocks. But just, and things where he weren't, he weren't even there really on June 1. Like, mentally, you know? It wasn't about... So what is there for him to reveal about June 1 then? He said that he was going to talk uh, about... There must have been there, something... There is, there is, there is one thing... Um, it's kind of like... I, I, I'm going to let him talk about it, but... It's, it's more... It's not like a major, major thing where you go... Oh, shock revelation. But just different things in the build-up and maybe like a little bit of health and, you know, stuff like that. Like, where maybe he might have not have been firing on all cylinders, which... I don't think, at the time, it wasn't something that, it's only when it was looked into and tweaked and, you know, oh, right, maybe we should be doing this instead, you know? So nothing like sparring, panic attack, all complete bollocks. And when I say health, I'm talking, like, just general, like, endurance and, like, training and stuff like that. Those are the words of Eddie Hearn. And Eddie Hearn was stating that, you know, of course, he didn't like the excuses that <clears throat> Andy Ruiz gave during this whole buildup. And, um, you know, my counterpunch on that was there's no excuse for Andy Ruiz to come in the way he came in. Now, everyone that loses has excuses. You know, this is my take on people with reasons versus excuses. Reasons are for the winners. Excuses are for the losers, right? <laughs> but if you clearly look at Andy Ruiz, you can tell that he was not in shape. He had gained a lot of weight and in, he, in, it was no... There was no logical reason why he gained weight besides he wasn't in the gym like he's supposed to be. Now, I don't know if that was necessarily an excuse. I look at that as a definite <coughs> logical <coughs> explanation. Okay. Now, that's him showing why his performance was so poor. That was his explanation, okay? And I bought it because he, he looked like trash. He didn't look like the, the, the guy that fought and won the titles from Anthony Joshua on June 1st. He did not look like that. But with Eddie, he was stating that he didn't like it because he gave a lot of excuses, you know, and in that, you know, it was excuses on that end. But then again, you know, Eddie said, well, we gave, we could have gave you a lot of excuses, but we didn't. There were there was none, you know, and what I say to that is Anthony Joshua didn't give anybody excuses, but there were things that did come out and they were leaked out, you know, and in things that are meant to be secret eventually will come out you know, some way or the other. And the concussion thing, he like, you know, of course, whatever Anthony Joshua said to the commentator and said, is something that I'll just tell you. You remember the press conference right after he was announced the winner and, you know, and it was awarded his belts back. He told the commentator that, hey, it was something and I'll tell you and only you. Something that he didn't want to tell the public. We don't know what that is. We could speculate all day to what that was. But Eddie, of course, was here to say, you know what? It wasn't because he was concussed or anything in training or anything like that or a panic attack. That's total bullocks, right? Now, we don't know what that is. You know, maybe Anthony Joshua, you know, him being himself, he'll probably write a book about the shit in five to ten years and explain what happened the night that he was defeated in a major upset the way he was, okay? And I think the excuses or the no excuses clause or statement 
or slogan rather. Like, hey, there's no excuses coming from Team Joshua. I think that was, that could have been orchestrated. But if you think about it, if something was really wrong with Joshua that they did not want you to know about, that's exactly what do you would say. No, there is no excuses. There's no excuses. He beat me. He's the better man. Next question. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't talk about certain things if it was meant to be in secret or in private. Okay. Now, probably the biggest thing that happened out of that whole ordeal was what went down with Anthony Joshua. Why was he acting like that? The same way we seen Andy Ruiz come in at damn near 300 pounds and fight and perform the way he did. Then he turns around and says, you know what? I didn't really train like I was supposed to. We believe that shit. Just like a lot of us believe that the way Anthony Joshua walked in that fucking Madison Square Garden and walked all slow and shit and how he looked in that corner before they announced his name being the unified heavyweight champion of the world from the UK and the way he looked in his body language, people are, were to speculate that something was fucking wrong with him, right? So Eddie Hearn just said he wasn't mentally there all the way. Okay, we could chop that up and say, hey, maybe he just had an off night, you know, but you could say that if you don't feel like digging, if you don't feel like prying into certain other reasons why this shit happened, why he was fighting like this or that, you know, maybe he wasn't there mentally, you know, maybe physically he felt great because the motherfucker's in shape, <laughs> you know what I mean? But he's in shape, like bodybuilding shape, not boxing shape. And he found that out when he got hit, when he was dealing with somebody a lot quicker than him, despite how he's built. And that was Andy Ruiz. So I am interested to know what was going on that night since there was that one thing, which, which the point was they did not display. Now, you got to give credit to Eddie Hearn. You got to give credit to Anthony Joshua because regardless of what that was, okay, and Joshua wouldn't have mentioned it, okay, if it was nothing. He wouldn't say this, uh, it's something I'll only tell you. And Eddie Hearn obviously knows, right? That's why he said, I'll let him tell you. So obviously it was something that he decided not to tell people what was wrong with him. So it would come off as an excuse, and like I told you guys in the live stream, that's why alpha males do the things they do. They don't display emotions or this little thing or that little thing, regardless if it's a major thing or not. They're not going to expose it to the public because that's what alpha males don't do. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's exactly what happened. Why do you think he decided to say, well, there was something after he won? Not before, after. Right. So that was the that was one of those things I picked up on. Like, OK, now he's about to spill the beans on what really happened uh, before June 1st and why he performed like that and everything that transpired before that up to that time. You know, um, but it just shows you that, like Eddie Hearn says, we gave you no excuses. So please don't give us no excuses because back to the gist, nobody can make Andy Ruiz train, but Andy Ruiz, obviously. And he didn't do what he's supposed to do, you know? Now, he may do that on the third fight because he's lost a lot, maybe. Because he is coming flying back from Saudi Arabia, going back in time with a $13 million check. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, you know, maybe when some of that money depletes, when he spends a lot of it, he may look at that as an opportunity that he should have looked in and, 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 and focused more on and prepared more with because he should acknowledge what that actually meant. See, it's hard as hell doing a certain job, knowing you're going to get a certain amount of money, win, lose or draw. You know what I mean? And that's more and you're getting twice as much as you've ever got the first time. And the first time was twice. It was hundreds of times more than what you ever made in your life. So it's kind of hard to get up for that. So I can get that. To me, I think it was an explanation. You know, um, if Eddie Hearn really was going to be pissed at anything, it would be the uh, negotiation part. That's what I would be upset with Andy Ruiz with 
That's what I would reflect on. Like the trouble you gave us, the shit that you gave us about coming to Saudi Arabia. And then you didn't want to come to the UK. And then you wanted it in Mexico. And then people side with you getting in your ear telling you to tell Eddie Hearn to do all this and that. You know what I mean? That type of shit. It's a setup. I ain't going over there. I'm calling the shots, this, that, and the other. Smelling yourself. Now, if I'm Eddie Hearn, that's what I would think more about rather than, oh, I didn't work out and shit and I came in on almost 300 pounds. Because, I mean, we could logically see that. So, you know, you can't really get too mad about that over the day. I mean, obviously, it helped Joshua and his benefit because he came in fucking uh, um, fat and not really in the best shape of his career being the champion than the first of his kind. But anyway, you guys tell me what you think about Eddie Hearn's statements. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys have been counterpunching. Peace.